The Canon EFS 24mm STM lens is the follow-up pancake lens to Canon's original 40mm STM lens. This lens is going to come in at $150, that's $50 less than the 40mm STM lens, although this is an EFS mount that will only work with your crop-censored APS-C cameras. No full-frame action for this lens. With a focal length of 24mm, this is clearly meant to be a much wider angle for crop sensor cameras that were feeling the 40mm STM lens was a bit too tight when shooting. The aperture comes in at f2.8, same as the 40mm as well. This keeps the lens in the better than average category when comparing it to stock lenses, but it still won't even come close to the aperture of Canon's Nifty 50 f1.8 lens. Again, with a body that is practically the size of a lens cap, it comes in at only 125 grams and has a 52mm filter size, same size as the 40mm STM. There are 6 elements and 5 groups in this lens. Still trying to figure out the meaning behind this, still not quite sure. And the closest focusing distance you can get with this lens is 0.52 feet or 0.16 meters, quite a bit closer than the 0.98 feet or 0.3 meters you would get on the 40mm STM lens. Now in terms of hardware on the outside, the 24mm and the 40mm STM lenses are practically identical. Focusing feels good even with the end of the lens protruding out of the front of the lens when focusing. STM autofocus system still lets the lens focus more easily and quietly than traditional focus motors in Canon lenses. However, this only works on cameras that support this technology. My T3i doesn't fall into this category so I was unable to take full advantage of this feature, but iterations of the Rebel series that fall after the T3i, such as the T4i and after, can take advantage of this. For me, manual focusing still worked quite a bit better than autofocus. It is truly much easier to take photos and videos with this lens despite it not having image stabilization. The wider angle seems to be more forgiving when taking photos with your bare hands, and video seems to exaggerate the shakiness of the camera less at a wider angle. Photos and video look great, little to no distortion with that wide angle. Having that low aperture on what is a relatively wide angle lens can create the wonderful looking shallow depth of field, but it also allows you to speed up the shutter to get less shake when taking photos indoors. Video is still shaky, but it seems less so than what the 40mm STM lens was producing. Still, 90% of the time I could see myself using this lens would be with a tripod. It would still be nice if they had tried to fit an IS motor in this lens as well, but you really can't have everything sometimes. This lens, to me, is definitely a far better option to get for your crop censored camera than the 40mm STM option offering a wider field of view and offering the same great f2.8 aperture. Those looking for a full frame option can still go for the 40mm and get pretty much the same product. Being that this lens comes in at $150, it is still slightly pricier than the Canon 50mm f1.8 lens, but it is just as if not more practical in many more situations. Not having stabilization still makes this lens seem more like a lens that you would use in a studio instead of the field, but the wider angle and that low aperture definitely help make it more practical. As someone with a crop centered camera, I recommend this to anyone searching out fast, wide-angle prime lenses. If this trend of pancake lenses from Canon is any indication of where they are headed for the future, I'd say things are looking up for Canon's line of pancakes, even if they won't help me get a cooking show anytime in the near future.